Previously on D's Knots. Oh my god. Holy shit. In the last episode, we weathered a nasty storm. In this one, we deal with a lot of the repercussions for having to leave the boat in such short notice. By the time we got back to the boat three weeks later, we had to do a lot of cleaning, a provision run, get water, all in preparation to go down to Marathon to get our furling drum fixed. It's not a total disaster because we left ourselves a little bit of fuel. Our battery was dead. The mold wasn't too bad. Um, what else, baby? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much a disaster because we just left in such a, such a hurry. So there's like our sheets are everywhere. Um, clothes are everywhere. Um, the kitchen had our mattresses in it um, from Cody's room. So I just took those outside to dry a little more, but this is quite moldy in here. Um, yeah, it's really moldy in the kitchen, which we kind of thought I just started to clean the fridge, but there's a lot of mold in the fridge. It's pretty gross. And then Cody's room, there's a lot of water where his bed is, obviously a lot of mold. Um, just pumped that out. So overall, it's not horrible, but it's kind of nasty. Um, and then in here we have pulled up our mattress, which is also moldy. And there's some water on our bed too. Hey, we're sailing these knots. I'm Carol. I'm Bruce, and this is Ariga. Let's play Two Truths and a Lie. Ariga is named after the constellation. Our parents definitely approve of what we're doing, and we motor more than we sail. Find us sailing, diving, fishing, and checking out new places. Thanks for watching. Uh, she is clean. She's ready for business. Now that I shine the light in here, I'm like, maybe not as clean as I thought. We just took the rental car. We got fuel. We got groceries. And then Bruce went to go, well, sorry, headlamp. Bruce went to go park the rental car, and then we'll head back to the boat and eat. Doing the dishes. Did the ocean water. This is maybe one of my least favorite parts of boat life. <laughs> I know it's necessary so we can save water, but it also kind of grosses me out. But we do a fresh water rinse after. And we have a special outside sponge. <laughs> Flash, our other burner was kind of on the fritz, but Bimo just fixed it. A little turning knob. Yeah, that little guy was all seized up. I can't take it off because I got to retape, but this one. That little, that little guy. We filled up water today. Well, you didn't. Easy peasy five minute. Five minute, no problem. It's our pile. We had to do laundry today because today was the last day to do it. Oh yeah, that's right. I gotta tell you a joke. <laughs> it's not a joke, it's for real. Simo has been borderline depressed. What What do you say, for the past couple hours? Yeah, it's been since probably around 11 o'clock today. Yeah, she's going through laundry withdrawals. Usually she starts shaking. <laughs> oh, it's roasting already. I don't know if I want to go. All right, not too bad. Got the anchor up. We're heading out. Going to Marathon. It'll get, take about two days. We're getting a late start. We're leaving around one from Key Largo. And then we're going to average one knot. We don't have no head sail. So that's what it is. We got Simo over here. She's doing the Lord's work. Mop and bucket. Oh, anchor was so muddy in the chain that I just tracked mud all over the boat, so I'm trying to clean it up a little bit without getting it all over our laundry. <laughs> <laughs> We motored about 18 miles south until the sun was setting, and Bruce found this spot near West Key where we could anchor. It's hard to find anchorages in the Keys where there's nobody around, but we were really isolated in this spot and it ended up being so peaceful. Uh, we're going 
going to the sandbar at West Key, right? We just anchored and we hopped in a dinghy so we could make it to the sandbar before the sun sets. We think there's going to be a green flash tonight. There will be. There will be. I wanted a green flash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to think that this little sandbar is not here. Yeah, and this do. is just where they hang out. And I bring my phone to look at the depth. I mean, we gotta be on top of it right there. Right here. Oh shit, that is it. Oh. Here we come, a sandbar. Oh, and muddy. Now, this ain't no country song. You don't get a little mud on the tires, you get a little mud between your toenails. So we decided to head back to the boat and enjoy a sundowner before getting eaten by a bunch of no -seams. You wouldn't believe this, but I got beauty sleep. Just about 10 times out of 10, Simo always wakes up before I do, makes a nice fresh cup of coffee that I get to enjoy. But this one rare instance, I got it before her, I got to make the coffee a little strong. Sometimes these days get a little boring, especially when you're motoring instead of sailing. So you gotta do what you can to pass the time, like fishing and not catching anything or doing a thousand step ups. What doing? I'm doing a thousand step ups because it's hard to get in steps and stuff when you're moving the boat. Oh shit, I lost count. Um, but this is the one thing that I know I can do. So that's what I'm doing. Oh, that's chilly. Oh no. We need to keep going further south. Oh my god. Alright, don't be a baby. Mm -hmm. Oh man, there's like a lot of seaweed on one of our motors. Shit. It feels nice once you're in though. Yeah. We made it to Marathon. But we don't think we can access shore where we are right now. Um, so we're gonna go check it out. You saw something on, was it Navionics? Yeah. Saying that there might be like an abandoned dock, but we're not very optimistic. So we might just stay here for the evening and then go have to pay for shore access tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Elsewhere. We'll see. We we're really hoping to throw away some trash, but. No luck getting shore access. But the reason that we're here is to have the rigger um, work on our furling system, furlex, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> um, in Marathon, so hopefully we can still have them come out and then we'll figure out a way to get shore access after that. Once we realized we couldn't access land, we decided to pick up anchor and move to Sister Creek where we would be able to access the City Marina dinghy dock. Yeah, we're gonna be all right here. Okay. I like it. You like it? Our first med morning experience? <laughs> Is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay. I'm nervous. That's what we can do is just take the spare, tie it off here, through there, down there, Try to pull it as tight as we can. Yeah, bring our bow over a little. Yeah. We don't know what we're doing. Do you know I did that wrong? So I got that fixed, so it's rather right through there. We didn't take any video footage of us actually med mooring. Med mooring is a pretty fun and easy way to save space while trying to park your boat. It's like parking in a parking space. But first, you gotta drop your anchor, and then you reverse to where you wanna go. From there, you tie off one or two stern lines, and you back down on your anchor and remove some of the slack. Really, the whole goal is to not be able to swing. All this medmore made me hungry, so I figured it was about time to go catch some dinner. You know, me and Seymour like to eat our fish, I 
really excited. I was about to freaking floor it through here. But I wasn't paying attention because of the glare of the sun was in my eyes and I couldn't see how shallow it was until it adjusted. All right, now we just gonna start floating. Gotta get rid of this fishing boat. And just like every other time before, I got skunked. But, you know, we don't make the rules. Whenever you're in a creek, you gotta go fishing. In the next episode, we explore Marathon, do some boat projects, and move anchorages approximately a thousand more times. We're ready, Barbie. Okay, follow these knots. There goes knots. Follow these knots. Take it out, everybody.